Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move to Buffington Island, Ohio on July 19, 1863, where elements of the Union Army engaged with Confederate raiders in another attempt to stop General John Morgan in what was called the Battle of Buffington Island, otherwise known as the St. George's Creek Skirmish. In response to the raiding by Confederate forces, Union Major General Ambrose Burnside ordered elements of the Union 3rd Division, commanded by Union General Henry M. Judah, who was raised a son of an Episcopal parish minister and who was leading 1,100 men. He was joined by Union Brigadier General Edward H. Hobson, a former businessman who enlisted in the U.S. Army during the Mexican-American War and never left. Under Hobson was Major Daniel McCook, famous for the Fighting McCooks, which comprised of him, his brother, and 13 sons, along with another 450 men. Escorting the transport ships that Judah was using were two Union gunboats, the USS Moose, a wooden sternwheel steam gunboat, along with the gunboat, the USS Allegheny Bell. Judah's target was Confederate Brigadier General John H. Morgan, commander of 2,000 of Morgan's raiders. Morgan was a Freemason, a slaver, having personally enslaved an estimated 30 slaves, and was known as a banker, horse breeder, and hemp manufacturer. In the end, the Union came out the winner. Morgan and his raiders had been traveling in an eastward direction north of Cincinnati, Ohio, sometime between July 13th and 15th. They had found no support for the raid and were being run down and exhausted by the Union pursuit. There was a constant loss of men by Morgan's forces as the Union forces slowly harried them. Their goal was to reach Buffington Island, and in order to get there, they needed to cross the Portland Ford. They found Union soldiers guarding the ford, and Morgan wanted to take his time to approach their defenses, so he held his men back until July 19th to let his men rest and recover. It was during this time that Union General Henry M. Judah arrived. Having found his quarry, he made camp with the Union defenders. The Confederates were attacked in the morning of July 19th before they can launch their own attacks. They were attacked by General Judah and his forces, and the Confederates were caught out in a broad floodplain with no cover and very little maneuvering possible. The fighting was brutal in the early hours and included the death of the famous Union Major Daniel McCook, the 65-year-old patriarch of the fighting McCooks. Assisting the Union forces, the two gunboats cut off Morgan's ability to cross the ford and unleashed cannon fire on the exposed Confederate troops. Morgan was trapped and decided he'd push his way north along the floodplain, hoping to find another ford they could cross. The Union troops gave them no ability to cross, however, and split Morgan's troops into multiple smaller groupings. Morgan quickly realized there was a narrow path in the woods near them and ran with 700 men, barely escaping the Harry and Union forces, leaving behind almost 1,300 men along with his brother-in-law, Confederate Colonel Basil W. Duke. Final losses for the Union were light, with 25 killed and at least 30 wounded for a total of 55 casualties. The Confederates were devastated in return. Their losses were at least 52 killed and 100 wounded, and more than 750 captured for a total of at least 902 casualties. The other 400 just disappeared into smaller groups. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.